researching is called Tritoscantia zebrina, and it's known as the common name is a wandering plant. And we've been researching this plant for over a year now, and it first started with our professor, Dr. Katrina Carlson, and Dr. Rebecca Abler from UW Manitowoc. And we were researching Hmong elders in the Menominee um, and Manitowoc, Manitowoc region. And this plant, Tritoscantia zebrina, has been identified as a common medicinal Hmong plant. And ideally, they used it for and teas to drink to hopefully thin their blood or to help reduce blood pressure, and also to put on wounds as a poultice. So we've been re researching the other medicinal properties of it, and it started with a test of cancer cells with injecting just a basic water extract on cancer cells, and it started to show a slight degradation in the cancer cells. So from there, we've been exploring additional options of antioxidants and doing a zebrafish and a brine shrimp lethality test, and as well as some uh, different types of extractions and trying to find different ways to quantify medicinal properties. Um, and brine shrimp. <laughs> we also have been, well, with the brine shrimp um, lethality assay, we've been trying to figure out the effects because due to the previous research with the cancer cells, we try to um, test the aqueous extracts with living organisms to try to see if it has the same sort of lethal effects on also um, living organisms, and be because we were originally going to use zebrafish at the Manitowoc site, we were unable to do that because of lack of breeding capabilities there, mm -hmm. and we reverted to using brine shrimp, and we found that um, unlike the cancer cells, it, it, the triscantia does not uh, decrease the vitality of the brine shrimp over time. So that was the first, the basic start, was doing it on invertebrate. I'm not I'm moving up to invertebrates now with uh, zebrafish. Initially, I just wanted to see how lethal it was in comparison. And if, since they survived, that's a good sign, considering that's not just going to kill regular cells. It will also not won't kill regular cells, only to kill the, the bad cells. So the next phase, we'll be doing more. We did anti antimicrobial testing as well as a way to test if the zebrina had other medicinal properties. It didn't really prove conclusive for the antimicrobial, but with the DPPH, which is a antioxidant assay, it proved to show that there are some traces of antioxidants present through a spectrometer. But now we're moving into the zebrafish embryo, where there'll be zebrafish who have been induced with cancer. We're trying to test the extracts on them, see if it degrades the cancer cells over time, or just doing a basic in injection to see if the over time it ruins their developmental capabilities. So if they, over time, maybe their vertebrates don't developed properly, but so far, with a test with another student who also was working on this project, it proved that over the 21-day period, it did not affect their growth. So that's been the consensus research right wise. now, <laughs> at least deformity-wise. <laughs> and now the next phase, we're hoping to move on to doing more cancer cell research with different types of cancer, and in addition to look, move up to different types of eukaryotic cells as testing. And this is part of an NSF STEP grant, which brings students from two-year campuses to a four-year campus in order to get you know, hands-on experience in lab work and certain machinery that may not be available. And it's with um, UW-Manitowoc um, as well, where Jamie's from, and then UW-Stout Collaborative Grant. And we like to acknowledge Dr. Michael Pickard as well, who's provided the cancer cell part of our research. <laughs>